is another class, and um, I believe it's a build up on the previous classes, of course. Um, you can see the topic already on the board word stress. If you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, um, I think you're missing a great deal. Um, just go on your YouTube and search, or just search through the uh, word. Isaac or the words Isaac Humanitarian Foundation. Um, this project is powerfully packed by Isaac Humanitarian Foundation. My name once again is very Michael. Let's proceed with the class. All right, so treating was stress, and of course, um, I think over time, this is not a topic that is uh, that you're not familiar with. And that is why I just want to touch one or two details. First, I touch the facts and the issue, and then I give you the rules, you know. And try to make it as simple as possible. Now, when we say word stress, firstly we need to talk about what stress means. Stress is talking about the pitch of a particular word when we pronounce it. The part where we pronounce with more muscular energy. Okay, so if you can identify a part in the word when you pronounce a word and there's more muscular energy in particular syllable, that particular syllable with the energy is what we call the stressed syllable. The other one is what we call the unstressed syllable. Okay? Look at this. When you have a word like this, mango, mango, man, girl, say mango, mango, right? It's not mango, mango, or Mango. Now look at this. When you pronounce, you have the man then girl. The man is stressed because it takes more muscular energy. Is that not so? So, in your examination, what you get to see is the word that is stressed will be written in capital, or the syllable that is stressed will be written in capital letter, while the syllable that is unstressed will be written in small letter. But when you go to the dictionary, all of the words will be written together, M-A-N-G-O, and then the syllable that will be stressed, you are going to see something like a mark descending on top of that syllable. Do you get that? That's to tell you that the, the letter where this line is on top of, the syllable that it carries, M-A-N, together, gives you man, okay? That syllable is the one you stress. But in your exam, it must be in what? Capital letter. So how you determine the answer in the example is that any option you pick that has capital letter, you are telling us that that capital letter is the stressed part. Do you get that? Now, there are several words, you know, across the dictionary that are being pronounced, and of course they all have their different stresses. But we cannot just treat them randomly. There is a pattern to I mean, treating them and how you can almost speak any word and know that okay, this word is pronounced this way and the stress is correct. Okay, so follow me as I break them down to you. Okay. Now, we have the monosyllabic words. Monosyllable. We have words that are bisyllabic. Okay, now the rest will become polysyllabic words. Take note, monosyllabic means one syllable. Bisyllabic means what? Two syllables. Polysyllabic means what? More than two, three upwards. Do you get that? Now, this one now also have or has categories in which they belong. And basically, there are some of them we treat based on their suffixes okay, or endings. So it will get to a point where I tell you when you see a word that ends like this, or when you see a word that looks like this, or when you see a word that has this number of syllables and it looks like this, when you see a word that is an adjective and it has this number of syllables, all of those details are how we categorize those words, which are going to know the category in which they belong to. Okay, so we're going to pick them one after the other. We'll talk about monosyllabic words. Mono. Okay, I should have gone into details explaining what a syllable is, but I believe that anyone can always define a syllable. Okay, that's the simplest unit a word can be broken down into for pronunciation. 
Okay, so if, if I have the word mango as I gave it to you the other time, if I say mm, ha, mm, bio, oh, it sounds redundant. If I say ma, mm, bio, no, it doesn't make sense. But when I come here and I say men, that still sounds men, still sounds you know, logical. Then girl, still sounds like something people can understand. So invariably it means this particular word can be broken down into two simple understandable words. So you have the men and you have the girl. So we can say that this is first syllable, second syllable. Okay? And in layman explanation, we can say syllable is the number of sounds that we find in a particular word. For instance, if you have the word B-A-N-A-N-A, -A -A, banana. Okay? What you have is banana. Now you have banana. One, two, three. If you're going to determine the syllables, you can make sounds. Mm, mm, mm. Right? This one is mm, mm. That's mango. Two sounds. So we can simply say two syllables. These three sounds here, we can say three syllables. Do you get that? So, when we say monosyllabic, it means it has one sound. Or of course, it has one syllable. Do you get that? Now, monosyllabic words, they are self stressed. You don't start looking for, it's a monosyllable, so there's only one syllable, and that's the stress syllable. For instance, when you have the word can, you have the word girl, you have the word buy, you have the word same, same, you want to sing, the same, you have the own sign, the NG sound that has been infused to this, okay? Same, the N and G infused into this. Okay, so, same. Um, Two, eight, and you have etc. When you look at these words, they are self-stressed. So you don't need to be asking us, ah, what about this? How do we stress this word? Self, every word can be stressed. That is the explanation. Now, having explained this, there's a lot of sufficient explanation or examples from that is monosyllabic. So um, you do us a favor to go home, pick up words, any word you know that has one syllable. Just trick them on your own and know that they belong to the self-stressed category. Now, the bisyllabic, the bisyllabic words. The two syllables. Now, these words, these words are stressed based on the class of word. They belong to i.e. if they belong to a noun and they are two syllables, they belong to verb, two syllables, belong to adverb, adjective, and preposition. These five categories are the forms in which you can have two syllable words and their stress patterns are as below. These are the rules. Now, if you have a word that has two syllables and it is a noun, bisyllabic noun, you stress them stressed on the first syllable. Okay? For instance, you have the word uh, teacher. Teacher. So this T takes the stress. Teacher. When you have input, input. Okay? When you have um, export, export. This is goods or products that are taken from your country to another country. Import. Okay? Banker. Sander. ETC. When you check through them, you discover that they are words that have two syllables and they are nouns. So we stress them on the first syllable. Now we come here to buy syllabic verbs. 
verbs are action words. That's the common, you know, explanation, I mean, explanation we have. But I beg to disagree. Nouns are not action words. Nouns are words that show action. Uh, let me try to make an explanation of that. When you say a noun is an action word, it means any word that shows action. Oh, sorry, any word that has action in it, you are saying that is a verb. For instance, come, go, sing, start, begin, run. Those are verbs. But that does not mean they are action words. If they are action words, then this sentence will be correct. Look at this. When you have the word start, for instance, another word that can mean the same as start is begin. Another word that can mean the same is commence. Another word that can have the same meaning as start is initiate. ETC. You can see that. Now, if we put this into a sentence, the basics of a verb, according to what people normally say, is that a verb is an action word. If I put this into a sentence, they cannot replace each other in every case. Look at an example like this. Let us begin the match. If in your exam you ask to move for another verb, that means the same as begin. You can simply say let us commence. Is that not so? You can simply say let us begin the match. Oh, sorry, start the match. In a way, you can say let's initiate the match activities. But of course, when an I come to this place and I say let us start the generator. And then we underline start. And we say give us another word that means the same as start. Of course, we have the options on top. If you say you want to replace it, then you say let us begin the generator. You can't begin generator. In, then you say, let us commence the generator. You can't commence the generator. Say, let us initiate the generator. It's not possible. So essentially, you discover that the word start and begin, though they look like they have action word, and we can simply say that's a verb, it's a wrong definition. Simply put that a verb is that word that show action. In this case, begin does not show action in this sentence. So, a verb is a word that shows action in a sentence. With that being said, let me come back to the bisyllabic verbs. Bisyllabic verbs. Okay, now look at this. An example of verbs that have two syllables is, okay, let me pick an example from what I have on top here. Impute, for instance, which is a noun, can be a thing which is impute. Impute. If I tell you impute your name on the screen of the computer, I'm asking you to perform an action, which is a verb. So impute your name is different from impute. Impute is a thing. That thing that you put on the system. That's the noun. But when I say impute, is the action of putting this impute on the system. Okay? Look at this. Um, I think we use export here, okay? Export. Export. To export is to carry something out. You've already um, probably planted cassava, it has germinated, you've harvested. You have packaged it, looking very nice, now you want to sell. You discover that the quantity you have will be more than enough for people in your country. So, to avoid spoilage, you decide to take it out of your country to sell to other people in different countries. So when you are taking that produce, or oh, that's another example, or that product, when you are taking it out of the country, you are exporting. To export is an action. It's different from export. Do you get that? So, this takes the stress on the second syllable. Look at this first one. You are teacher, impute, export, import, banker, scandal, or sander. Okay? The stresses are on the first syllable. But when you come to the second one, you have Impute, action, do something. Impute, export, okay? Produce, produce. Whereas you can have produce. Produce is the thing you are producing. Whatever you are producing is a produce. Do you get that? ETC. I don't want to dwell too much on that because of time. Now, we come to bicellar baby. 
bisyllabic adjectives. These ones are stressed. These are stressed on the first syllable. Okay? Don't forget the adjectives are words that give quality. Okay? That give quality to things. Or that talk more about what the value of a thing. For instance, beauty. Okay, when you have the word beauty, you are stressing the beau. B E A U and T Y the small letter. Okay? Anger. Okay? Or angry. It's an angry bird. That's the quality of the bird. Angry. And then green. We are talking about the quality of a person in terms of beauty. We say all D. Or it's only the you stress, then D. It is. Okay? There are other examples. Once you see, once you see that there are adjectives, and of course, they have two syllables. Essentially, you are to stress them on the first syllable. Now, you have by syllabic prepositions. Okay? You stress them on the second syllable. Sorry, first syllable. First syllable. For instance, you have the word beneath. Okay? You have indeed. Okay? You have among. Okay? Among. You have because. Because. Okay? You have um, around. You have until. It is. Okay? The last thing by syllabic adverbs. Stressed on the second syllable. I e you have slowly. Okay? Slowly. Quickly. Okay? You have a um, nicely. Polysyllabic, polysyllabic, words with prefixes. Prefixes are those words you hand add at the end of a word, or suffixes rather, and words you add at the end. Words with suffixes, okay, that ends like e e n, a d e, o o n. E T T E. These ones you stress them with the syllable they go with. Let me give an instance. When you add the word lemon and you add A D E, look at it. It's over there, one of the examples. And you add A D E, it becomes lemonade. Now look at this. You add L E M O N A D E. But when you pronounce the word, it is not lemonade. It is lemonade. Le so when you break this down, what you have is lemonade. So you have to take this N and capitalize it so that it joins that suffix. So the word becomes lemonade. Okay? Now, we have this Japanese. ESE over here. The word is Japan. But when you add ESE, it becomes Japanese, right? Now, it is not Japan, then is. There is a syllable in that brief, I mean, suffix that joins that last letter. So when you break it down, what you have is ja pa then means, not Japan, then is. No. It's Japanese. Okay? So this is means. You make the N capital. Do you get that? 
The same goes for words such as questionnaire. You have A, I, R, must be added. When you have the word question, question, right? And then you add A, I, R, A, I, R. It is not question, then A. It is questionnaire. Okay? So, the where question, then A. Where is the N? So, what is the N in -E -E O-O-N, like when you add balloon. Balloon. This is the way it is expressed. The N-O-O-N. Balloon. Okay? You have words like etiquette. Okay? The Q at the end of that etiquette. Okay? So, together with the head. That is, you have this E T I Q U E T T E. So this U E T T E. It is Q. So the word is E T N K. You get that, okay? And so for this syllabic words. Now we still have the other verb endings or suffixes at the end, which I'll be treating in the next class.